Hey there friends, it's Lauren with Rustic Honey. I hope you guys are having a great week. I wanted to bring you along today as we're gonna start first in the kitchen preparing a yummy breakfast on the go for our upcoming vacation. And then later in the video, I'm gonna bring you along as we kind of tidy up and reset our home post vacation because somehow it's like you left a vacant home but it still needed attention. So we're gonna give the home some attention today and reset for the week. So to get started, I am just mixing up a really quick pizza dough and I'm gonna let that rise while I get to work on the filling. And we had recently made something like this with the ham and cheese rolls, but I'm doing a breakfast version today because we need something quick um, for our little river vacation this weekend. We wanna get down to the river pretty early in the morning and with four kiddos, that's gonna be, um, you know, a challenge in and of itself. So I would like to have breakfast made and ready to go if we just wanna toss these in the microwave or even eat them cold out of the cooler. They should be good either way. So I am just, as you saw, whisking up some of our farm fresh eggs and adding in some sausage that I had actually already cooked previously in the week. So I had a little bit left over, which was perfect for this project. I love doing that. Whenever I have a little extra sausage left over from something or say I make biscuits and gravy, I'll make like double and then I can save that sausage back for a pizza later on or something. It just makes it so much easier to have that meat already cooked and ready to go. I love doing that. All right, our dough has sat for about 20, maybe 30 minutes now, and I am just gonna give it a roll here on the counter and fill it with some of this yummy stuff. We'll get to more of that here in a second, but I had to think back to my childhood whenever we were going on this vacation, and I remember my mom cleaning our house maybe not as meticulous as as I remember it, but I just remember her really cleaning the house before we left on vacation and I was always like, why do you want, why do you need to do that, mom? We're not even gonna be here. Why does it matter if the house is clean or not? But I totally understand that now as a mom and as a wife that you wanna come home to a clean house. So I would love to tell you that that actually happened here and that our house was clean before we left on vacation, but unfortunately it was like everything I could do to get everything packed and all the food made and out the door. So, so while the house is picked up, it's not exactly clean. So I'm sure um, it will need a little bit of attention when we come back from vacation. All right, I am breaking up the scrambled eggs a little bit more. Like the smaller pieces you can get for this little stromboli, I think the better because then you get, you don't have big chunks of eggs. So I tried to break that down and then I added sharp cheddar cheese on top. Definitely like to measure with your heart when it comes to the cheese and then give that a good roll. And I made my dough a little thinner in a few areas than I would have liked. So be careful not to get it too thin because of course with all that filling, it's easy for it to fall out. So I don't know that these are my prettiest stromboli rolls, but they are quite delicious. So I hit it with some butter and some garlic salt. And I think that's an important little part there that really gives the dough a little extra something. I had a thought, and I may have to share this recipe sometime in the near future, but I've made those rolls before with the Philly cheesesteak filling, and then you put like the butter and the, what all is in it, brown sugar and some seasonings, and then you put them in a pan and you pour over that glaze. That would be amazing with rolls like this. So I think I might have to try that again in the near future, but these were yummy for breakfast nonetheless. Um, I just put them onto parchment paper and baked them for around 15 minutes at 350. And we ate a few before we hit the road that morning and then ate the rest of them out of the cooler at the river on our little mini vacation. <laughs> now returning home, it was kind of like I said, all I could do to get all the projects done before we had to walk out the door. So I still had all of my canned goods sitting here and I wanted to get those nicely organized in the pantry. So I'm just writing on top of them, of course, what they are and the year. That's always important when you're canning. So um, because time goes faster than you think it will. We usually eat through everything within a year, but as you can see, I have one jar of marinara left from last year. So I'm gonna pull that out and make sure that I stock it at the front, just like they do at the grocery store. So we're kind of creating our own little grocery store here in our pantry. And this is just, I feel like a good shelf that holds a lot of weight in our house. So I always put a lot of canned goods on here. I'm gonna put my jalapenos in here and the new marinara and have it all lined up and ready to go. I always think it looks so pretty when it's stocked at the end of summer. Now, I don't know if you're anything like we are, but we come in the door and all of the things kind of hit the floor. So <laughs> I am slowly picking up the kids' bags and, and getting everything straight into the laundry. I did do a load of laundry at our Airbnb before we left, which was super handy when I got home. It's actually, isn't that weird? It's actually more enjoyable sometimes to do laundry on vacation. Again, things I never thought I would say, <laughs> but now that I'm a mother, here we are. 
<laughs> so I'm going to go take all of these things back to their rooms and put things in their home. That is something I've been trying to teach my kids all summer long. Everything has a home. We just can't seem to get everything in its home. <laughs> this morning, post-vacation, I woke up really energized. Like, we are going to clean this house. We're going to get it back to maintenance mode. We are just going to, you know, get it really clean and have that. I don't know about you, but I have that feeling when I'm done cleaning the house for the day. You, like, light a candle and you look around and you kind of... I don't know, you're like, ah, oh, it's so clean. <laughs> Although we should really title this video like what it's like to brush your teeth while eating Oreos. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but that's basically what it's like when you're cleaning house and there's kids running around destroying the next room. That's, it can be very discouraging. <laughs> Just like we talked about, I think in the overwhelm video, it's the, the art of doing a few things today that you won't have to do again tomorrow. So I'm trying to clean off the fingerprints on the walls a little bit today, clean my mirrors, I mean, I will say by the end of this day, I already had toothpaste on the mirror again. I about lost it, <laughs> but it's just part of the season of life we're in. It's all about perspective, isn't it? So the kids just went outside for a few minutes. My husband's out there too. So I am like thinking I'm all alone. I might make myself a sandwich really quick. It's about lunchtime and we have this these beautiful tomatoes from our garden and a few leftover sandwich fixings from our vacation. There is just something about a fresh like deli meat sandwich in the summertime that sounds so good. Or maybe it's just because I didn't eat very much of this type of thing when I was pregnant and that's why I'm just all of a sudden craving it all the time. But I'm hitting it with the meat and the cheese, but the best part of the sandwich is those uh, pickled cucumbers and onions that we made. Those are amazing on a sandwich. So if you haven't tried that yet, I usually eat those as like a little bit of a side, but they're delicious on a sandwich. And now that we thought we were gonna have this quiet lunch to ourselves, here comes the other kiddos ready to eat. So I'm gonna take a bite out of my sandwich and then make a few more for them. And then we'll get back to that. Like if there's ever a bag of potato chips or some kind of yummy treat in the kitchen and you open it, they as soon as they hear it, they know that someone's eating something good and they've gotta be part of it. Getting back into our cleaning, I had really neglected our shower and our bath. I have a hard time keeping that into my regular rotation, I think through the week in the summer because I'm, I'm managing like the layers of, of dirtiness in our house and the first layer is always the clutter and putting everything away. So I don't get to the deeper cleaning things that I need to. So if you have any tips on cleaning bath toys, let me know. What do you, how do you clean your bath toys? I'm mixing up a little bit of a scrub for our shower glass doors. I'm just doing some baking soda and lemon juice, a little bit of water to make a paste, and then I decided to add some Dawn dish soap for a little bit of something extra there. I don't remember where I saw this, maybe on Pinterest at one point, but I'm just kind of making like a thick paste, and I'm gonna rub that on our soap scum filled doors and see if I can get some of these a little bit more clear today. Now again, this is a nice little scrub and it works pretty well. I feel like you just let it um, sit for about five minutes after you get it worked into the doors, and then you can rinse it off and use a squeegee and that's what you're gonna see me do here. Now I will say it would probably work even better if a person were to do this at least once a week in their shower. Um, it would probably really help to keep the soap scum at a minimum or even just to use the squeegee on a regular basis. As a busy mom of four, that is the last thing on my mind when I get a moment to take a shower. So I still haven't worked that one into my habit routine yet. Now while I'm in here waiting for those five minutes, I'm just gonna wipe down our, some of our doors. This door is particularly special to me. We have two sliding barn doors and they are actually old dairy barn doors from my dad's side of the family. They're my grandparents' old farm. So they not only had fit the farmhouse charm of when we built our house, but they have a little bit of a story to them as well, which is usually the perfect pieces for our home. Now, as you can see, I'm cleaning up in the bathroom and the kids are slowly but surely making their messes in the living room, which is fine. That's just part of life, like I said, and I want them to stay busy doing that. That's something I realized here recently too, is that screen time is um, lovely in an essence where your kids do sit still and they don't make message, messes. And maybe that's why a lot of us moms get caught up in, you know, in that, like we always, we're in a doctor's office, like watch the screen. If you want them to sit still for five seconds, watch the screen. But really when they're making messes and being creative and not using screens, that's really what we actually want them to be doing. So I think we just have to think about it that way sometimes. So we're not mad about the messes later on. I am going to treat myself to a little 
bit of a snack here. Again, I'm obsessed with the, <laughs> the cucumbers and onions. I'm going to be sad when those run out. And I recently bought these protein coffees off of the Amazon. I fell, I fell victim to Amazon Prime days. A friend sent me a link and I went down the rabbit hole and pretty soon I was buying things that I had had saved in my cart for a long time. But they are pretty yummy. I can't decide if I like the two cups of coffee in them. I kind of just wanted the protein more than anything, but they are pretty yummy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love coffee. I made that sound like I didn't like coffee, but I'm just one of those people that likes the ritual of a warm cup of coffee in the morning. And I don't necessarily need like the energy style drink of coffee in the afternoon. I just kind of like having maybe a decaf or something, but I thought it was pretty neat to have a little can of protein with some coffee just on hand in case there were some busy summer mornings where I didn't get a chance to have my little treats. I'll leave a link for those below if you want to get sucked into Amazon like I did and give those a try. I am just freshening up a few things here in the bedroom. I needed to do some sheets and get the beds completely clean again, including the baby bed. And of course, back to the mirrors and the dusting. The little things that don't seem to get done every single week, especially during the summer. Um, I'm better about having a cleaning routine throughout the week whenever we are more in a routine for school. But in the summer, we are just very much willy-nilly and doing it as, as needed. So I feel like I should explain here. I'm currently using our crib as just a changing station since the baby is sleeping in her bassinet. We have several baby blankets over the corner of this crib, and so I'm gonna put some of those in the hutch and only display a couple here that are a little bit more coordinated. We are just so blessed to have talented friends and family that have made little blankets for baby Ruth. So they are all very special to us, but I thought I would put a few in the hutch while we're not using them and then just display the other ones on the side of her crib. Now we've got to get to tackling some laundry, so I am going to get Little Miss in a baby wrap here and try to finish freshening up this room for the evening. Now I think I had mentioned this in one of our videos about habits, but I really have gotten to a point where I almost look forward to folding laundry. Um, I've made it to where it's kind of my me time in the evening. If I do a load throughout the day, I will throw it on my bed until I have time to sit, or not sit down, usually stand on the side of my bed like this and fold laundry. And I will listen to a podcast or an audiobook or I will watch YouTube and just have that little time to myself. Maybe even just do it in quiet so that I, I have time to think about the day. Um, but that's something I've used to look forward to. And when I do laundry for my kids, I will stack up their items just the same way that they go into their drawers. So their tops drawer is on top, obviously, and all of their bottoms go in the bottom drawer and everything else goes in the middle. And so they know that too. So if I stack up all their laundry and I say, hey kids, it's time to put your laundry away, they know the tops go in the top drawer, the bottoms go in the bottom drawer. And it makes it to where it's honestly really simple. And a lot of our stuff is super casual, so it's easy to put away. Even if it gets a little bit wrinkled, it's okay. And then the nicer things get hung in the closet. But even though it's late in the day, I went ahead and made the bed because there is nothing better than getting into a bed of fresh sheets after um, a long day of cleaning. Now we've kind of lost track of time and I need to get dinner on the table. I am going to mix up my taco seasoning mix. I've gotten to where I've just started making this from scratch. I usually have all of the ingredients in my seasoning pantry, cabinet, whatever you want to call it. I will just mix up about a double batch every single time. That way um, next time I won't need to make it from scratch whenever I go to make tacos. But we are going to make a new batch today, shake it up and have it on hand. I will say I'm not the best at measuring when it comes to spices. I kind of just wing it a little bit. As you can see, it's not an even tablespoon on certain things. And I just kind of measure them with my heart. And Reese, of course, loves to help shake it up and get it well blended for us. Now on this particular evening, we were going to grill out and by we, I mean my husband, but then at the last minute, he of course had different chores that he had to go tackle on the farm. So I was left with hunks of frozen meat. And I really didn't want to leave the house to tend to the grill either because I was in the middle of cleaning. So one little hack you can do with your Instant Pot is to put that little trivet in the bottom, put in your frozen meat and about a cup of water and then run it. I usually just ran it for like 15, 20 minutes and then I'll get it completely thawed out. I think you can completely cook it through like this too if you want to run it longer, but I like to just get it to where it's thawed. And then I took the meat out here 
and I discarded most of the grease in the water, but I just left a little bit on here so that it will come together nice for some taco meat. So I'm gonna discard that and then put it back in and turn it on the saute function and just break it up as it finishes cooking for our taco meat. Now this is not my favorite way to make tacos, but when you're in a pinch and you don't wanna sit there and babysit something, this is a really easy one um, just to get your meat thawed out quick and to have it ready to go. You could also do this for spaghetti or something um, if you needed ground beef for that in a hurry. Here I'm adding two tablespoons per pound of ground beef. So I have two pounds of ground beef and four tablespoons of that taco seasoning that we just made. And that seems to be, it seems like a lot of seasoning when you're putting it in, but that seems to be just about right. So always taste to make sure that it fits your preferences and of course adjust as needed. Now I'm going to take you back to some footage from honestly a few nights before when I had made a few extra things for a taco night. We just happened to run out of taco meat, but we still had a few of these extra garnishes and things on the side ready to go in the fridge. So I thought I'll just make more taco meat tonight and use up the rest of that. So here we are. We have a ton of tomatoes still, even after canning our tomatoes, we have such a good harvest. We had Roma tomatoes sitting on my windowsill. So I cut up a bunch of those and I'm gonna add in some onions, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of jalapeno and cilantro with lime juice and cumin. We're gonna make ourselves a big batch of pico de gallo because my family loves that. It's like a little fresh salsa, just ready to go. And it's the perfect topper for any kind of taco bowl. I love taco night in our house because we can make all of these yummy, colorful things and my kids can just pick and choose what they want on their tacos. So I feel like it's a one of those easy dinners that pleases everyone and you can make your taco bowl as elaborate as you would like or as simple as you want. For the most part, my kids will eat anything, but if you have a picky eater, taco night is good because if, if your kid just wants just chips and meat and cheese, then you have everything ready to go and you can still have all the veggies on the side too. But the rule in our house is they should at least try everything once. And luckily a lot of my kids do like the veggies. Um, they don't seem to want it every single time, but for the most part, they like all of it. Now I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a fun mayo. Instead of using lemon juice, I'm using lime juice. And we're gonna add in some cilantro and seasonings so that we have ourselves a little bit of a fresh lime cilantro mayo. And we're gonna kind of blend that in with our Greek yogurt later or sour cream, whatever you have on hand. I'm putting in a little chipotle powder, some cumin and garlic salt. And that is just the perfect little decadent sauce to incorporate. I'm gonna kind of mix mine in with my rice. It's gonna be so good. And I have a few peppers left over from the garden as well as those onions, so I'm sauteing those on the side. But taco night is probably one of my favorites and probably why we have it so often. We've got candied jalapeno peppers from the garden too. So this is my bowl for the night. And again, we kind of just set it up like taco bar and let everybody grab what they want. All right, after dinner, it's always kind of hard to get yourself to want to clean up the kitchen, but I have such a habit of doing it now. And I know again that my future self in the morning is gonna walk into this kitchen and start the day right if everything is cleaned up. So that's always my motivation. I feel like there's something about the evening time that I almost get another surge of energy after dinner because I know that pretty soon the baby's gonna be going to sleep and then my hands will be free for a while and I can tackle a few more things to get ahead for the next day. I know some of you are probably thinking, how do you have a surge of energy after dinner? <laughs> because that's not, it's not a typical thing probably. And it's usually not for me either. So I think the thing that keeps me going in the evening is just to keep moving on the things that I want to get done for the day and then rewarding myself after that. Maybe that's as simple as after you clean up the kitchen to light your candle for the evening and that just signals that you are done for the day and that everything's fresh and ready to go for tomorrow or maybe it's something as elaborate as taking a bubble bath or enjoying your favorite show or something so I think if I always have like a finish line in mind then I can tackle a few more things and power through because we all know an object in motion stays in motion. I definitely did not want to plop down on my couch before I finally tackled the exterior of our refrigerator. I feel like in my past few videos I've noticed how smudged up our refrigerator is and I'm sure you guys probably haven't noticed as much as I do but it needed some attention now my instant pot was 
if, if you have an instant pot, you know sometimes that ring gets a little bit smelly and I had accidentally burnt some rice on the bottom. So if you put a little bit of water in there, a little bit of soap and some vinegar and run it, I feel like it takes care of a little bit of that smell and it's a lot easier to clean if you get something burnt on the bottom. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted after all the cleaning we've done today and I still have messes all over the house, but the house didn't get messy in one day and it won't get completely clean in one day either. I have to remind myself of that. We're slowly getting back to a maintenance mode and pretty soon we'll be in school routine. But I did some things this week that set me up for a peaceful morning and I hope in some way it encouraged you or inspired you to do a few extra things in your house this week too.